so first we'll see the concept of targeting now in this particular slide you can see this is the target and this is the dart or the arrow which is pointing towards this particular target right so in this system this is your drug which is going to that specific target right and it is exerting the required effect now can anybody tell me that if this arrow doesn't go to this target and it goes to some other points here what will happen what will happen students and it can affect the healthier cells yeah it will affect the healthier cells so therefore the in the regular course of administration of the drug it, the drug might not be going the full concentration to the target but it is going to other components in the body and that is affecting the healthier cells right and in order to prevent that we are using this targeting another thing is that when you point at this particular target you have got the maximum force presented to this particular target so the concentration in the case of our the drug delivery system the concentration required will be lesser because the drug is not going to other places okay so here the target is can be any organ tissue or a cell and your arrow is nothing but a pharmacologically active moiety so the targeted drug delivery implies for selective and effective localization of pharmacologically active moiety at the pre identified or pre selected target in the therapeutic concentration restricting its access to the non target normal cells thus minimizing the toxic effect and maximizing the therapeutic index so this is the principle behind the targeted drug delivery systems so to check a uh, history about this concept of drug targeting the concept of designing a specified delivery system to achieve the selected drug targeting has been originated by paul ehrlich in 1902 who proposed the drug delivery to be a magic bullet magic bullet means it is just going to hit the target not going to go to the other sites in the body he described the targeted drug delivery as an event where a drug carrier complex or the conjugate which delivers the drug exclusively to the pre selected target cells in a specified manner so what do you mean by this drug carrier complex and conjugate when we say drug carrier complex means you have got some carrier in which the drug is embedded for example liposomes so in liposome the drug is embedded and this system is targeted to a particular cell tissue and when we say conjugate means the drug is chemically attached to some other system and this conjugate is able to target targeted to that particular cell or the tissue so drug carrier complex or a conjugate and that is going to deliver the required concentration of the drug to the target so you have got a pre selected target cells next bangham's observation on phospholipid hexagonal liquid crystals that they are perm selective to the ions in a manner similar to the biomembrane led to the discovery of artificial vesicular system based on phospholipid amphiphiles this is the in, before introduction of liposomes okay this is the way how the uh, invention started that is these phospholipid membranes they are perm selective perm selective means they are allowing the movement of only specific component outside of that particular structure and not the other component that is called as a perm selectivity so this way they just observed that the ions are able to come out of the 
system just like our cells cells have got membranes which are called biomembranes so through these biomembranes some ions can move in or move out so similar observations were made in the case of phospholipid hexagonal liquid crystals after that in 1981 gregory edis he described the drug targeting using a novel drug delivery systems as the old drugs in the new cloth means the same drug you are using but because you are targeting to a specific organ you are exploiting the all possible advantages of that drug for example if you are if you are having a drug which has got a, a toxic concentration and effective concentration very much nearer to each other therapeutic index is closer to one in such cases the chances that there will be lethality to a particular biological system is more and therefore you are not in a position to use that drug which is a very potent drug but if you go for a targeted drug delivery system you can decrease the dose of the drug and if you are able to decrease the dose of the drug the lethality of that particular drug will be reduced so it is nothing but the same drug you are able to use because you are using the targeted drug delivery system that is nothing but the same drug old drugs but in the new cloth now we'll see the need of drug targeting now we'll just check about what happens when a drug is taken orally when a drug is taken orally first it moves through the gastrointestinal tract so in the stomach there are acidic con conditions and certain drugs which are uh, labeled to the acidic conditions of the stomach they will get degraded in the stomach and for that matter throughout the gastrointestinal tract there is a variation in the ph so that variation in the ph will cause degradation of the drug then uh the food which we take inside our body orally that food gets uh digested because of the enzymes which are present there right so those enzymes will also act on the drug and will cause it degradation another thing is that the microorganisms which are present in the git they are also responsible for the degradation of the material which we swallow so all these things are going to decrease the net concentration of the drug another thing is that there is a concept called absorption window that is when the drug is present next to the absorption window there is a maximum absorption of the drug and when it passes that absorption window whatever is the concentration of the drug remaining in the dosage form it it will be waste it will not get absorbed so therefore you want to have Uh, a maximum absorption of the drug before it passes the absorption window right after the drug gets absorbed now it is present in the blood from the blood it will go to the liver and again in the liver there are certain metabolizing enzymes which are responsible for its degradation this is also called as what degradation in the liver is also called as first pass metabolism very good so that is the first pass metabolism which further decreases the concentration of the drug and after that after the blood gets pumped from the heart it will go to the various uh, arteries and various tissues and various organs now in order to prevent whatever the degradation which is occurring to the drug when it is taken orally what will do we can administer the drug by which route hello in order to prevent the degradation of the drug which occurs when it is given by the I oral will, route we will go for I a mean, parenteral yes. route right so when you go by the parenteral route the problems which are associated with the gastrointestinal tract those problems will not be there but still metabolism and uh, deactivation in the liver will be still there so the net concentration reaching to the various tissues is going to be less and whatever are these routes which are taken up by the drug which is administered they don't ensure 
or give the guarantee that you will get the drug reaching to the required site where the action is required okay so it doesn't give any guarantee that the drug will reach to that particular required uh, site and the adequate concentration right uh, for example there are certain organs where the barriers are to a greater extent like for example blood brain barrier so how much is the concentration of the drug that will cr cross the blood brain barrier is very important so that is one thing then there are certain diseases which uh, have the uh, uh, accessibility of the drug very poor for example in the case of rheumatoid arthritis then cns diseases some cancers then intractable bacterial fungal and certain parasitic infections right so when we want to treat these particular diseases uh, you will have to have higher concentration of the drug because you have to take into consideration that when the drug is taken orally it is undergoing degradation in the git when it is taken parenterally it is undergoing degradation in the liver and then whatever the concentration of the drug which is reached in the blood that is also getting distributed all over the body and hence the actual concentration of the drug reaching to the target is going to be less and suppose in order to elicit the particular response whatever the concentration you require at the site of the action is x but then in order to overcome the degradation pathways the first pass metabolism you may require to have five times the concentration of the drug required at the target site so this way you are going to increase the amount of the dose the amount of the dose is increase number 1 number 2 the frequency of administration is also increase okay then along with that we also have seen that the concentration of the drug reaching to the sites other than the target sites are going to give you the toxic effects and that is the reason in the case of cancer the toxic effects of the anti cancer drugs are observed okay so this high doses of the drug and frequent administration may lead to toxic manifestation in appropriate pharmaco disposition that is the way the drug get distributed or metabolized then it will have untoward metabolism of the drug and other toxic effects okay and therefore there is a need to have the drug targeting so in short if we say what is the need of drug targeting because there is uneven biodistribution of the drug throughout the body there is a lack of the drug specific affinity towards a pathological site necessity of a large total dose of a drug non specific toxicity and other adverse side effects of the drug for the, then there are certain drugs which are unstable in the gastric environment and the drugs which have got low therapeutic index so these are the factors which makes the drug targeting